Hey Blue Marble Riders, how are you doing? Hopefully good. Uh, nice to see you face to face again without a crash helmet on. I'm in the Blue Marble Rider garage and uh, some of the more eagle-eyed among you might notice that uh, while there are four trickle charges, there are only three bikes. One is missing. Okay, don't panic you Z900RS fans. I haven't done anything silly like sell it as if I would do that. It's downstairs in my workshop. We'll be going down there in a minute. Just a quick update for you Grizzo, Guzzy fans who are probably disappointed to hear that. Don't worry, I've got a lot of work to do on this and I will be filming a lot of it. So first of all, valves. I'll be doing the valves, then I'll be doing the plugs, then I'll be doing the airbox, or sorry, air filter. I'm not gonna change the airbox. I'm gonna put a stock air filter in for obvious reasons. Then I'm going down to balance the throttle bodies, do the TPS, and then of course, the reflash. I'm gonna do it myself. So if you're interested in how that all works, whether I screw the bike up or not, Stick around in the next few weeks, months, and I will be working on that. Back to the Z900RS, and as if by magic, here we are. This is the box that arrived. It arrived about four days after Adam, who contacted me, uh, asked me if I would be interested in doing a review for his products on Pyramid Plastics, the ones that, that go on all sorts of different bikes, not just the Z900RS. They don't only sell their own products, they also sell a whole bunch of stuff by Pooj and many other manufacturers as well for all sorts of different bikes. But they do do a great selection of things for the Z900RS. Adam had seen my videos, he liked them, he's seen that a lot of people have seen them, and he asked me unsolicited if I would do a review on some products. So he sent me a web page and I went through the web page and uh, said to him, um, yeah, I'll take that, that and that. So I picked three from the web page. He's packaged them up and sent them out here. Unbelievably quick, by the way. And here they are. So I will be putting them on the bike. The reason I chose these three parts was because I felt that a lot of um, Z900RS riders will be looking at these three parts in particular, two of them very much so. One of them I got a bit selfish. The selfish one was um, basically caps to cap some of the holes on, uh, on the bike. That it, it got, it's got caps on most of them, but there's, for some strange reason, Kawasaki do not uh, cap up some of the areas. So I thought to keep the elements out, that would be a good plan, so I went for those. Also, he sent me a hugger, which is something that I've often talked about putting on the bike. We'll see how that works out. It's a gloss one, matches the tank. It also comes with a couple of transfers that I have to put on. And then finally, he sent me a fly screen. Now you can see, I already have a screen on the bike. I love that screen, but I've often thought, I wonder what this would look like with a fly screen. So um, I'll put that on and uh, you know, I, I'm under no pressure. At no time did Adam say to me that I was obligated to um, give him a good review. He simply made the offer, I accepted it. And so I'm gonna be absolutely honest with you. So while this is um, what you might call a paid promotional sponsored, I am gonna be honest. If I don't like these products, I will let you know. And I'm sure Adam will be uh, completely and absolutely okay with that because I had absolutely no pressure on me at all. Okay, so without further ado, let's unpack this thing and see what's in it. Aha, first things first, end caps, isn't that nice? A couple of little end caps there that will go nicely over these holes here and here and here and I'm guessing one on the other side too. So that's nice, you got that in there too. This looks like the hugger. And there's the, there it is. Now it's still in blue, blue wrapping. All the instructions, looks like I've got some parts and pieces down here. That's good. Oh, there's my t-shirt, look at that, very nice. He did, uh, the, the lady who packed them up got back to me and said, uh, would you like a, a t-shirt, what size would you like? I said uh, large, because that's usually what I am. It looks like it'll fit. Ooh, ooh, look at that, nice bike. I don't know, what is that, R1? 600? Don't know. Very nice though. Get modded. All right, that's what we're all about today. Get modded. So I'll, uh, I'll slip that on the tank for now. And we dip in here one more time. Oh, hit myself in the camera. It's never a good thing. And this is the Pooj. Uh, looks like. How do you say that? Pooj? Pooj. I always say Pooj. There. That's it. All right. Now we've got a, uh, the smoke, the smoky uh, screen. That's kind of nice. Same as, same as the other one. 
and we have got the uh, main body of the fly screen. Looks fairly substantial. Looks looks fairly big actually. Huge. So yeah, you can see that's going to go around the headlight, and this smoky shield is going to go right here. All right. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to spend the whole time doing this in front of you. All I'll do is uh, probably stop a couple of times and show you about any difficulties I come to. But uh, all in all, it'll be get that off, get that off, put this on, put that on, and I'll show you, tell you, talk to you about what it, what it was like, the process of uh, putting it on, and also, of course, the process of, uh, of, of the quality and how easy were the holes drilled in the right places, what sort of tools did you need, etc., etc. Okay. Okay, the instructions are fairly straightforward. Um, it shows you a sort of blown up picture of your rear swing arm here. There are two places where the hugger fits on the, the OEM hugger fits and uh, supposedly this fits in the same two places and then one on the third side. On the OEM hugger, the, the one that comes stock with the bike, there is a third point. Uh, it's a plastic push down clip that's right here. This isn't on this one. It shouldn't make any difference. It rests here and it's uh, fixed in two places. It does say you might want to uh, loosen the mounting on the exhaust in order to get the uh, this one off of the swing arm and we'll uh, we'll get to getting the old one off and see if I actually do have to move or loosen that in order to move the exhaust down a little bit. I may have to remove that point as well. So it says remove that and loosen this, shift the exhaust out of the way. I'm going to see if by cutting one of these down short that you can do it without. If you can't, then I'll do it. I just wanted to try, you know. Uh, what does it come with? It comes with some some um, stickers for my color scheme. It also comes, interestingly, if you have a yellow ball, these were in there as well uh, for the yellow ball. So this is the little Allen key that I made in order to uh, be able to fit on the other side. And this is a 5 mil, And you can see it fits in here quite nicely. There's a point here, a point here that we have to undo. If you look down in there, I hope you can see it right, and I'll point with the Allen key right here, you can just push down, I've already done it, you push down on here, and then this will free this button. This is not on the new one. Um, it just attaches with the three bolts to the uh, swing arm. So we'll see how that goes and uh, figure it out from there. On the other side, you can see the problem. Unless you have a short Allen key like that, uh, you are going to have difficulty clearing this. So we'll see if this works. If it doesn't, I will have to loosen a couple of points on the exhaust, this being one of them, and then one down here in order to lower the exhaust so that I can get in. I guess it all depends on how far this screw comes out. So I can do it by hand now, I think. And there it is, it's out already. So that one is loose already. And we'll take off these. There's one. And as you can tell, they were pre-loosened to begin with. So there's two. That I push down. Let's see how easily this third little grommet comes out. There it is. Okay, she's out. Ooh, look at the crap in there. Look at that. Hugger didn't do a very good job of gravel and all sorts of stuff up there. Maybe I'll give that a little clean before we get going. With the old huggers off, complete with uh, all the oil on the inside. Um, there it is. Okay. So hopefully this uh, hugger should touch down here and leave this open. It was only where the plastic covered it that you can see sort of scuffing and uh, a little bit of uh, pitting. So I don't know if you can see um, down here, I've put the, the little uh, plastic uh, fixing in there that was there because there was a hole left here. And the other hugger is going to come up to about here. I don't want this hole exposed. So I put this back in. I put a little ring of silicon, Permatex silicon. It's UV proof. A little ring of that uh, just underneath it. And then I push this in. Don't push that middle pin down because you'll be releasing it again. So take the pin out, put the collar on, then push the pin to level and uh, it's all good. I just don't want water getting into the swing arm and sitting in there and uh, rotting this out from the inside out. Uh, best to be safe uh, rather than sorry. I hope you can see this by the way. There it is. And silicon right around there. So here is the hugger and I'm just taking the last bit of the blue off it. Okay, it's very nicely wrapped. You gotta be very careful with it. Um, it is gloss, fairly tough, but I uh, just wanna be careful. So. I can go in the garbage and here we are. Here's the hugger. Now, part of me says I should put these transfers on 
Uh, I've got to take a look in the picture and see how those go. And part of me says I should put them on the back of the bike. I don't know. But uh, for now, a couple of things. Uh, this piece of rubber, very nice thought. Uh, it actually goes here. You cut it down to size here. It goes inside here and it's supposed to uh, cover this bit here to stop it rubbing on the swing arm when you mount it, which is a nice thought. Yeah, so getting the grommets in is a lot easier. Do not put the little collars in first. Uh, you need to squish those grommets down. A little bit of um, the bishop's best friend, otherwise known as Vaseline, will really help these get in there. So once that's done, grab a collar and it's about slipping that collar in there. Okay, so I've done a bit of a dry fit here. I've got these partially screwed into position. The, the holes line up beautifully. And I've got the little rubber grommet, uh, sorry, no, the little rubber uh, covering on the edge of the hugger here that sits on the metal. That's great, stops it scratching. Um, I'm being a bit precious about whether I put these on or not. I may actually put them here. I've seen a few bikes do that, but that'll be something I do in a, in a little bit. What I have noticed though, is that with the spacer, which goes on here, um, this, uh, there's a spacer, this bolt is going to be touching the exhaust. So I, now I can see why they asked me to take this off first and then to unscrew down here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little screw down there and then I could drop the pipe and I'll have better access to it. So for those of you who are thinking like me, you could get away with a shortcut. Nope. Do as the instructions say. RTFM. Take the exhaust off. You are going to need a 10 mil and a 12 mil. I've used an extension so the bottom of the ratchet doesn't hit the exhaust. This actually is still quite firm because of all the rubber grommetage in there. Be prepared to catch a whole bunch of wa washers that come off this and know where they go. So if I support the pipe, that's so much easier. Oh yeah, there's some movement there. So as soon as I, I loosen this one down here, this whole thing should come off. Okay, so uh, this collar here needs to be undone. When that's undone, you're using a 10. Don't take it all the way. It's pretty well out and I can, I've got some movement here now. I can move the pipe. I've screwed this in with my uh, three mil Allen key and I've, uh, you know, uh, tightened it quite well, not too tight. There it is, it's uh, solid. Now getting it ba this back up, you really need to wiggle this out a little bit so it clears that. And as you get it back up, you can now let it push itself back in. I'm gonna hang this bolt in there. So as I tighten the collar up underneath here, you can see it right there, I hope. As I tighten that up, it will be in the right position. Remembering that uh, this washer stayed down this end. So here we go. There it is. And I'll just put the screw on the other side. If you find your exhaust is really loud after you've done this, it's because <laughs> you haven't mated it very well. Don't have to go crazy, just as my friend Lyle says, an eighth of a turn after it's a sort of hand tight feeling. Okay, so let's see if I can't just, there we go. Nice. Good, solid as a rock. That's in really tightly, perfect. So on to the next thing, hugger is on, loving it. Gonna keep that one, looks good. Way, way more coverage. The other one stops about here. So look at the difference here. Um, I've got a lot more uh, uh, protection for the underside of the bike to stop it dripping down here and getting in there. It's gonna fire off the back a lot more now than it ever used to. So that sort of thing that you can see up there won't be taking place anymore on the bike. Wonderful, it's gonna fire off and maybe hit the bit of the tail tidy, which is something else Pyramid Plastics do. They do a nice tail tidy. Uh, so uh, yeah, you could do that if you want. Moving on, I'll put the end caps on now for a few of these things before we get on to getting the new Pouge fly screen on the front. Okay, so I have got the Pyramid uh, Plastics frame end caps, uh, part number, and fitting instructions, it just shows the left-hand side, which is the side I'm in front, uh, sitting in front of, but it's essentially the same on both sides. You're gonna plug that gap, that hole, and that hole. This one's got a reasonably nice bolt in it. I can see why they didn't include that one, but these two, a um, little fiddlier and maybe not so pleasing. Best to use your hand, I guess. There we go. Uh, that's in, and then here, up here, should just hand press in there. Yes, it does very, very nicely. Make sure that's in good and tight. 
and then the second one here up here like this these are stock uh, you just wonder why kawasaki doesn't take the the good um sort of you know just what is this i don't know i mean i'm not sure what pyramid plastics charged because they've had to design these make them and mold them but i'm sure kawasaki ordered thousands of these could possibly muster up another 50 cents and uh, put these in especially for the swing arm there which is um, you know to me I don't ride this in the rain uh, it's the princess as well as the Gutsy. they're both princess bikes so they don't go out in the rain um, ironically the first day I bought this it was raining like hell but that's the only day it's been in the rain um, and so you know I'm not as concerned as some but if I was definitely commuting all weathers I'd have these covered up for sure looks a lot nicer okay same on the other side I'll get that done in a second and then we will head to the fly screen when I come over to the workbench you can see that Pouge offer you a, a difference in the windage um, now on that one back there there is absolutely no buffet at all and that's critical for me that there's no buffet it does uh, take a lot more of the pressure off your chest but what Pouge have done here if you take a look is they've given you the difference between this fly screen and a standard bike and you can see uh, no added helmet protection which is great news because you're not going to get any buffet it does not disturb the air around your helmet upper body protection they say 25 percent to 20 percent on a naked bike well okay five percent off you can see the picture here uh, slightly reduced um, upper body um, windage uh, but where it is going to help you is in the lower body 50 percent to 25 percent is what they say and how's that going to help well just the lower part of your jacket you know that feeling where you're, if you're wearing a loose jacket and it's flapping around um, that should maybe help 50 percent off okay awesome so if i do ride with this i'll let you know how it uh, how it works um, whether i keep it or not is down to styling um, whether i whether i like it um, you can take a look here too uh, this is the CS14. Uh, when I look at the information on this, it's, it's called the Universal, but it's the CS14. If I look over here at the packet, the reference number is right here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, there it is, uh, reference 10156N, if you're interested in it. Okay, on to getting the old one off. So first things first, you want to put this uh, little plastic protecting uh, or rubber strip uh, along the bottom where it's going to contact the headlight. And so I'm just fitting this on right now. If there's anything left over, I'll trim it off. Because it's clear, you can see how deep it's going into the flange. There we go. It looks good all the way around in there. Pretty well to the edge here. It's going to do its job. So I'll trim that off. And then we're on to the next bit. Okay, with it trimmed to size, Next thing to do is to drop these uh, nice little fittings in here that uh, will expand gently around uh, the collar fitting into the plastic around them. So these are the receivers for some screws and then you're going to have some caps over the top of those. I won't bother peeling the decal off yet, but here they are. Now when that goes in, you're going to be squeezing that a little bit. So I'm going to do the bottom one first and it looks like we have a washer and uh, yeah washer goes on if i can pick up the washer so washer goes on first of all and then we're going to put this guy in here and it's going to turn now the the tool for this wasn't provided so you're going to have to find your own i'm guessing two mil to three mil and i'm just going to do that finger tight for now just to hold it in place and i'll i'll get the uh, allen key and uh, tighten it up and then put the caps on top and then it's just a question of taking my old one off and getting this one on okay so you've got some mounting brackets to put on and there is also this doohickey which goes in here and this is allen key five i'll just tighten that up there we go don't need to go crazy with that and i'll put the four in and again same thing you don't want to go crazy you know you're screwing into an aluminum bracket there but it's going through plastic so just a an eighth 
that's all you want to do. So I've taken off uh, two screws down here to remove the silver bezel. Out it's come, very easy. And then four screws in here just to tilt the headlight forward. Be careful that you don't uh, change the adjustment of the headlight. These are screws with springs on them. Just don't turn those, just turn the four that sit literally in the rim at the uh, oh, 10, two and four and eight. So once you've got the four screws off, you can get your 14 on here and you can uh, put your 12 inside here to grab the other one. And this now should start to turn out. And now I appear to have like room to flex the plastic. So easing it in there, easing it in there. Okay, let's talk about the Puge fly screen. So got it on, did have to make a modification, had to remove the screw in here that, that, that guides to how far it leans back. This has to lean all the way back on the Z900, so much so that you need to put the pads on the inside so that it is touching the clocks. That's fine because this is a very strong friction fit. If I had one complaint about the, uh, the setup of the thing, it was, re it was really easy, apart from I did have to take my, my bezel off pull my bulb out, get my screws, but that could be a bike oddity uh, compared to other models. But um, the bracket is a beautiful uh, silver, uh, very nicely drilled, I think stainless, and fits in really nicely, slides in, you tighten these up, and it's on really strong. But um, with that said, there is a little bit of the bracket showing. So if you're a real, really finicky, my suggestion would be to spray paint those bomb black or matte black and they wouldn't show so much. Perhaps even Pouge could think about, uh, especially with a black bike, uh, creating those in a black color. But other than that, I think the screen is a, is a really good compromise. But from the back, it's really tight, very, very nicely wrapped around the clocks. Love the way that looks. Looks even more attractive than this one does from the cockpit. Considerably cheaper too. Not quite sure of the prices, but I'll post it up here for you. Much, much cheaper, much easier to put on too. This requires a whole lot more brackets because it's a lot heavier. From the side, this is certainly more of a futuristic or modern looking uh, piece of kit. So if you're someone who wants the Kawasaki Z900 as not so much as a throwback to the Z1, but as a, a sporty naked, this is a better, a better solution than the Schick or, or a few others actually. In fact, I think um, this would go well on bikes like, uh, you know, the XSR 900. Pouge or Pyramid Plastics supply these in all the colors for the Z900 RS. So you can get it in the blue and the gold, the yellow and the gold, the root beer and candy color, the black, all different iterations come from them. Uh, no problems at all. My one area is from the front, it is definitely a modern looking, a much, much more modern looking uh, futuristic fly screen than this one. This one harks back to, for me for the for the 80s, 70s and 80s. This one's definitely a much more and if that's the look you like you go for it. Looks are subjective so I'm not really going to put my stamp on it either one way or another. So like I said um, really nicely finished. Uh, they could do a better job with the brackets just darkening them up but that's not something that's not a game changer. Um, this does push all the way back onto the clocks. It isn't quite even so it fits beautifully around the bezel. It's tight, very nice. No wind getting up there or maybe very very little just just skimming off it very very close to it um, and the same all the way around except for the fact that the top is a little further forward than the sides because this is literally as far back as you could push this fly screen so if that's something that's going to bother you it doesn't bother me and it's not particularly noticeable from the side it looks very well balanced um, it may be that I have my um, I did get flashes last year I adjusted my my beam, I felt it was too low. I adjusted it up and I started even on low beam to get people flashing me. So it may be that my own particular headlight is tilted too far back at the top and that this would actually uh, be completely uh, the same all the way around if I, if I readjust this, which I will probably do. Riding with this thing, uh, you are not gonna get the same degree of protection you get from this guy. 
This guy is a lot bigger. If I gently put her in here, you can see it completely covers it. It's both taller and wider. And I still don't get buffered off this on the helmet. It's going to flare the wind out, lower body, but you're not going, unless you're, unless you're shorter than, uh, you know, 5'7", I don't think you're going to get any buffet off this at all. So in conclusion, what do I like? Well, I really like the parts that uh, Pyramid Plastics have for the Z900RS. They have a ton of them. They have a ton for all sorts of makes and models. So uh, yeah, I love, I'm loving the caps. They really give it a more finished look. This is, the, this is the one that came with the bike and these are the ones that they put on there. Then for me, the hugger, it's completely made for the Z900RS. This is a Z900RS custom made hugger and I think it does the job absolutely beautifully. Um, not only is it really well finished um, and everything lines up beautifully, this is no universal fit. This is for the Z900RS, but the hugger comes much further back than the stock one. The stock one stops about here. This comes back, you're gonna get much less debris up in here. So that's something I want too. You can get this in any color. I left my uh, stickers and decals off as I did on the front there because you can get this in any color, uh, any uh, decals or stickers for it that you want. Um, they can come in matte, they can come in different colors. They come in green and gold, they come in blue and gold. Uh, same thing, uh, really nicely done, highly recommended. So I recommend the hugger. I recommend the caps and with reservations, I recommend the screen. It's with reservations though, um, the silver bit here and looks wise, it doesn't do it for me, but for you with your green and gold, your blue and gold or whatever else up the side here might work for you, might make it look a little more retro. For me, it's a very modern screen. With that said, I'm hoping you really enjoyed that. Please hit it up with a like, and let me know what you thought and Thanks once again to Pyramid Plastic for supplying the stuff and letting me have a crack at it. I really appreciate it. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mopple Rider out.